I put for our title today, I'm calling this Biblical Leadership, a Trinitarian Approach. And I know on the official handout, it just says Biblical Leadership, but more, the more I reflected upon this and just Biblical values and ideas, um, Biblical is a weighted term. It's something that I think that we use in the church um, that is kind of like our nuclear weapon, that we say, look, when we want to say that we're right and our views are right, uh, what better way than to get God on our side to say why we're right? And so uh, as I thought about the models for leadership and um, I was constructing a biblical model, model for leadership, I realized that I needed to uh, be a little bit more humble in my approach. And I'd encourage us all to be a little bit more humble in our approach because I think that there are lots of biblical models for leadership. And so this is just one biblical model for leadership. And as you read other people who are Christian influence leaders, and as you think about your own models of leadership, I want you to think that, think that there are several models out there. Um, and I'm just giving you one, one perspective, one take on that. I'm calling this a Trinitarian approach. A, a common way to think about leadership is uh, from a biblical perspective is people will go to someone like maybe Moses or you go to Nehemiah or you go to Paul or Jesus. I even brought a couple books. Um, so, um, so uh, you know, if you want to talk about biblical leadership, I have J. Oswald Sanders' classic, Spiritual Le Leadership, which is a great book on models of leadership and bring spirituality on it. Um, you've got um, the Passionate Visionary, Leadership Lessons from the Apostle Paul. Um, actually, not so sure about that. I'm not sure Paul was the best leader in the world. but uh, And we've got Jesus on, on leadership. So there's going to be all sorts of models of leadership out there. And one of the most popular ones, of course, for Jesus is servant leadership. We like to talk a lot about servant leadership in the church. I'm not going to talk to you too much about servant leadership today because I think there's plenty out there to talk about uh, when it comes to servant leadership. Uh, Greenleaf has the, has the popular book that's based on Jesus' principles um, about servant leadership. And so there's plenty to read on that. One, one small aside I would say with servant leadership is if you use the servant leadership model in your church, just be cautious with that model that we're not making people into servants so that we can lead them. Uh, so I think sometimes in the church we have a tendency to say, well, you know, serve Jesus, give your all for Jesus, and they do it at the, at the expense and, uh, of the sake of the church. And we really, as a servant leadership model, can sometimes make people into servants and not really leaders as uh, servant leaders. Uh, serve me, serve my church, serve my values, serve my ideas. And so it's a great model servant leadership is, but I think it's also a model that is often misused by people in positions of power to say, let's go and be servant leaders here at the church. And you reflect like, you know what? It's a great model, but I'm not sure the person in charge is actually using this model. Um, and so it's just, that's, a, that's all I'm gonna say about servant leadership uh, in terms of that model, just a quick word of caution. Said today, well, I wanna give you a different model, a Trinitarian approach. Um, I, I decided to go with a Trinitarian approach because the great thing about the Trinity is it consists of persons, uh, but there's also community that's involved in it. And it's a complex relationship, such a complex relationship that we can't even really adequately describe it in human terms. Like, well, there's one God and there's three persons. Like, well, is that three gods or is it one God? Or how does that all work? And so there's a complexity, a nebulousness that comes to that. And uh, I think with leadership, sometimes there is a complexity and nebulousness that we don't, well, we know it works, and we have ways to, we have models to describe that. But one reason why there's such a proliferation of leadership books out there is because uh, no one has quite hit it on the money in terms of exactly what leadership looks like. And so we're always capable of learning what leadership looks like. Uh, in our own community settings, leadership is a dynamic. In order for there to be leadership present, you have to have at least two people for leadership to occur, right? You have to have at least a leader, and you have to have at least a follower. Now, there's different ways that that relationship can look, at, look like, but if you only have someone following, that's not leadership. And if you only have someone leading, that's not leadership. You have to have at least two people. The Trinity doesn't work if you only have the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit. The Trinity only works when there's a Trinity. And so uh, just taking seriously this idea of leadership and playing with this idea of leadership. And again, there's a lot of different ways to describe leadership. 
Um, Joe Maxwell describes it as influence, which is a nice model. Anyone that you're influencing is who you're leading automatically uh, with that. But again, it, it requires a couple people um, as well. The, the other thing um, that's interesting with leadership is um, to lead, uh, there's in some ways there's something inadequate even about the name leadership as we as you explore models because I think for leadership in order for me to lead you uh, I have to be in front of you and I have to be guiding you but as we explore models of leadership you discover there's a lot of different models out there for leadership there's coaches guides on the side who aren't leading directly uh, there's people that are that are leading from behind or leading from the side. there's a lot of different directions that we can actually lead from and, uh, but leadership, I think, at the core idea of the term, seems to imply that you're always in front of everybody. And I don't think that that always has to be the case. 